Cubase allows you to do this in four different ways. By entering a numeric value, by highlighting the field, and pressing the up and down arrows on your keyboard, by scrolling the wheel on your mouse forward or backward, or by pointing the cursor above or below the time display. The cursor will change to a plus sign or a minus sign. When you see this, click your left mouse button and this will increase or decrease the field value. Frame rate settings. These are used to synchronize Cubase with external video devices. Display format. This determines what time format appears on the project's main ruler. Display offset. This is typically used to synchronize Cubase to external media, which starts at a frame other than zero. Bar offset. This is similar to display offset, but is measured in the number of bars, and it's active when bars and beats is selected from the drop-down menu above. We discussed sample rate and bit depth in the second chapter of this tutorial. Even though a higher sample rate and bit depth gives you more flexibility, accuracy, and headroom, you are still at the mercy of the speed of your computer, your CPU, available RAM, hard drive space, and the parameters of your sound card. Set your sample rate only once and at the beginning of your project. Don't change this during your project. If you export files with different sample rates, Cubase will resample them to match your current sample rate. File type Wave and broadcast wave formats are virtually identical with some exceptions. Broadcast wave can store extra information such as author name, descriptions, time code, etc. Wave format is just fine in most cases, but due to its 32 bit nature, it has a 4 gigabyte barrier. Now, this is sufficient to hold more than six hours of CD quality audio. However, for multi channel audio, such as 5.1 surround sound and high definition formats, 32 bit and 96 kilohertz sample rates, the duration would be about 20 minutes. Wave 64 was introduced by Sony a few years back, and it addressed this very problem. Wave 64 is more suitable for long recording and larger file sizes. AIFF is the Macintosh file format. For our project, I'm going to use the broadcast wave file format. Our last option is stereo pan law. Let me say a few things about panning laws. They come from the days of analog mixers and basically address the fact that the same signals recorded on the left and right channels and panned to the center are about three decibels louder than the same signal recorded mono. In order to compensate for this, Cubase has three different panning laws. Minus 3 decibels, minus 4.5 decibels, minus 6 decibels. 0 decibels equals the off position. This is less of an issue if you use mostly stereo tracks. But if mono compatibility is important to you, you might consider going down to minus 6 decibels. 
Another issue to mention, if you move your project to a different host, for example, Sonar, it may sound a little off due to different panning law settings. I'm going to leave ours at minus three decibels. And this concludes our segment on project setup.